Okay, guys, welcome back to the Burp Sweep class. If you look here, I inserted a single quote, and obviously I found another SQL injection, right? No, look what we found. Okay, so here we're actually seeing that it's not SQL injection, right? It's XML or XPath injection. Now, if you go back to the OWASP testing guide, the OWASP testing guide gives the impression if you get down to input validation testing, that you test for Oracle, you test for MySQL, you test for SQL Server, you test for LDAP injection, you test for ORM injection, you test for XML injection, you test for server side include injection, you test for XPath injection, right? You test for IMAP and SMTP injection, you test for generic code injection, you test for Postgres, right? And in reality, what you're doing is if you look for if you look for parameter passing and you insert your single quote then when it breaks you read the error message and then based on that error message that's when you know what type of vulnerability it is so the real part is not it's not knowing that it's SQL injection or LDAP injection or whatever it is. It's going to have parameter passing. Whatever the backend data store is, that's the type of injection it's going to be. So if you have parameter passing on webmail, the backend data store is probably LDAP. So when you insert your parameter in the, in the address bar or in the post request, you'll probably get LDAP errors. Same with a VPN, like maybe you have a web interface to a VPN, right? And you do that, and the backend data store is probably LDAP, right? That's what gives you LDAP errors. You get LDAP syntax in there, and there's your LDAP injection. If the data store is XML, right? You insert your single quote, and then, you know, when you do that, you know, you get an XML error. You know you got XML injection. You don't literally test for LDAP injection, XML injection, IMAP injection. Like, you don't literally test that way. What you're doing is you say, every time I see parameter passing, I want to insert stuff in it so I can break it, right? Now, here's where something like Burp Suite is good for you. You have something called the FuzzDB. So if you have the FuzzDB, you have a project out on, uh, it used to be Google Code, now it's out on GitHub. So if you go out here to the FuzzDB, you're going to see that I'm going to click Attack. Now let's go to Discovery. So I'm going to click Discovery. Now I'll just choose Attack, sorry about that. So I'll go to Attack. And I want to do SQL injection. So now I'm going to go under detect. And let's do how big is that? 42 lines. Yeah, there you go. So I taught you, hey, every single time that there is a parameter, I want you to insert this and test it. Well, if you just try a single quote, that's usually pretty good. But there are cases where somebody uh, has done something to stop. So maybe a single quote doesn't work. So what you may end up doing is you may end up saying, well, how about a double quote? How about a semicolon? How about a single quote semicolon? So here's an example of a, a single quote and semicolon. So you see here that you've got a payload that has a single quote, a semicolon, and an SQL statement that does a version call with a wait for delay. 
Now, what you probably want to do is you probably want to try every single one of these. So every time you see parameter passing, you want to try every single one of these. And then maybe you want to try every single one of these for MySQL. If I can help you learn about who we are, and hopefully, if you're willing to join us. This is InfoSec Addicts.